Hey everybody, this is Nascal 2 k one back with the newest episode of Nerd Rage. I'm kind of in my car tonight, and I'm relaxing a bit, only because I'm at work and I'm bored. So, I thought I'd throw this video up. I've been kind of digging into Warlord Games' Hail Caesar. And, in case you haven't heard of it, it's basically a 28mm scale, well, its default is 28mm scale, historical war gaming, like, you know, uh, the ancient Rome, the Brits, you know, things of that era and time period. It centers mostly around Rome, obviously, and you can build these giant armies and have it out on the tabletop for fun and profit, you know, whatever. Now, ancient battles always interested me because I have always loved history. So when I sat and I saw this game, I was like, wow, you know, I really want to pick this up. And I kind of put it off because everything else kept coming out and everything else kept coming out and everything else kept coming out. And I just ended up getting so far behind in my gaming, I didn't think I'd ever see the light of day. Well, we've hit a drought the last couple of months. And with the new starter set that had just come out, I decided I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. So it arrived today. And there will be uh, uh, an unboxing slash parts review later. The only reason that's not coming out first is because A, I'm at work. And B, I wanted to really dig into the contents of everything before I actually started posting opinions on it. I don't want anybody to say I, I, was, I didn't give it a fair shake or whatever the case may be. Well, that's why this video is called First Impressions. Please note. It says first impressions. It does not say review. Which means everything I say is subject to change upon verification and or in-depth reading of the rule book. This is just what I saw glancing through the game. Calm down your angry typing. Moving on. Now, when I was flipping through the rule book, and the, the main rule book, okay, I also ordered at the same time, I ordered Armies of Britannia, because my wife wants to play the Celts. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll play the Rome, we'll have at it that way. So we started to, you know, look through and do some shopping. It's like, okay, so I bought this starter set, which sure enough is the Celts and the Romans. I was like, all right, this is, doubly works out. So I got it. First thing, straight from the door, right off the bat, the models in this starter set are incredible. I cannot, I, you'll see it in the, the review, I cannot stress this enough, they are beautiful. They are some of the most beautiful looking 28mm scale models I've ever seen, especially for a large scale battle game. It, they've got just enough detail to where they look really good, on, they're going to look really good painted up, but they don't have so much detail that it'll take you six years to paint up a full army. Now. The other thing I wanted to quickly go over is the basing. And we're going to come back to this in a minute, but uh, I wanted to touch on it quick. There's no bases in the starter set. So if you're going to order the starter set, make sure you get yourself some bases. Now, somebody is going to say, well, what bases do I need? And therein lies the rub. This, and again, this could change. I may have just missed this giant passage in the rule book, whatever the case may be. Oops, give me a second. Gotta grab that. But basically, what I'm seeing is there is no uniform base size. There we go. I added some extra light in this bad boy. Uh, there's no uniform base size. So what you're looking at is basically throw it on whatever base you want. Which is fine. Because, like, for me... Uh, I like putting up mine individually 20 by 20 millimeter bases, which is what they say is standard. Put it on 20 by 20 millimeter base, go from there. So that's what I did. I ordered up a bunch of 20 by 20 millimeter bases from Shogun Miniatures, which I'll, on the review, you'll learn more about them. And I ordered some movement trays from them just to get the starter set up and going so we could, you know, get some games to roll. Well, I looked over what they give you, and of course there's, you know, you, you got your little starter set rules or whatever you want to call it, you know, instead of, what's actually in the box is one full standard box of Roman infantry and 
two standard boxes of Celtic Warriors. But what they do is they uh, they make you break it down into 10-man units. So you technically, in the starter set, have three full units of Roman infantry and six full units of Celtic Warriors, which is fine. There, there's no problem with that. It's a starter set. You're not looking for, you know, full armies right off the bat. Otherwise, why bother printing more models? So, I'm looking through this book. And again, this this is what immediately jumped out at me. And it, it's it's going to be a huge turnoff. I know it already. And it's, our, I mean, it's actually sticking in my craw now. I know it's going to bug me even more when I start playing the game. The problem is uniformity. There's no baseline for anything as far as uh, composition of the models go. To give you an example, the starter set, as I said, comes with one box of Roman infantry and then two boxes of Gaelic warriors. Well, what they don't tell you in the books is what unit size is. Now, it says one, bo you know, one box of uh, Celtic Warriors is 40 models. So, in order to base that up, and if they say that's supposed to be one, one unit, that's eight across, five deep. So, that's eight rows, or five rows of eight models, which is huge in 28 millimeter scale, never mind bulky. Okay, and that's just for the Celtics. Now, there's an article up, if you dig around, you can find it, where they brought Rick Presley in, or Priestley, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, don't hammer me on that, I'm sorry. They brought him in, and he talked about basing options and uh, uniformity and basically everything that I'm complaining about right now. And he says, oh, well, you know, the model should be 160 millimeters across in the front between 160 and 200 millimeters across. Now, if a base is 20 millimeters, you're looking at 8 to 10 models across. Roman Legionnaire boxes only come with 20 models in them. 20 models and a ballista. So in order to pull off, according to Rick Priestley, in order to pull off one unit of Roman Legionnaires, I need to buy four boxes at 30 bucks a box for one unit. Now, if you go on Warlord Games' website, and you look at the uh, Roman Legionnaire section, you'll see that what they did was they actually put it in all the pictures is either a 6x5 formation, 6 across, 5 deep, or they are putting it in a 5x4 formation, 5 across, 4 deep. The 5x4 formation is what they're showing for the main box that they're pushing, which is a unit of 20 Roman Legionnaires and a ballista. So you go five by four, and you're looking, and if you can't picture that in your head, it's it, it's only a couple inches across. I mean, you're, you're looking at five 40K models put side by side, or, or five fantasy Warhammer Fantasy models put side by side, five infantry, and then four deep. But then you have these other units that are just out there. You, you have skirmishers that are supposed to be eight models, and they're supposed to be one line across, or they could be two. Who knows? Whatever. Just throw them on the table. This game really seems to stress the just drop a bunch of crap on the table and roll some dice. And it's just, it, it's, it's bugging me. The other thing that really irritates me, and again, this is just uniformity and basic composition. We bought the Army of Britannia book, as I had said earlier. And we took a look through it today, and my wife, the first thing my wife said is, well... Well, how much does this stuff cost? And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, none of this stuff has any points values to it. Like, huh? So I grabbed the book. I was like, really? And she showed me. And she's like, oh, you know, look, this it says here the druids, you can add one druid per warband, and it forces the opponent to make a leadership check before a successful charge can be made. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. She goes, yeah, but there's no points to it. How, how, how do I add them to my army? I was like, um... I don't know. I, and there's no answers. I, I've spent the last... Good God, I can't count the number of hours searching the internet, scrubbing forums, looking up Warlord games. They never specify this. You're just supposed to throw all this crap on the table 
be damned balance in the point costs. And uh, then you add, and, and again, this is coming back to uniformity, vehicles and ballista and siege weapons and things like that, uh, one chariot costs $25. And again, according to them, a unit of chariots is like four to six models. So in order to put one unit of chariots on the board, you're looking at over $125. And here's the kicker. If I put one chariot on the board, just one, the game's rule set treats the one the exact same as it treats six. It, it doesn't enforce any kind of composition or uniformity. It's just drop a bunch of models and go to work. And I, I'm... I, it, I'm looking over World of Games and I'm seeing all this cool stuff like, you know, Mastiff Hounds and, you know, uh, uh, Pack Masters and Roman uh, Roman Legionnaires and Roman Centurions and, you know, Roman... Oh, what are they called? Pilots or... Pil oh, God, I'm going to get hammered for that one. I cannot remember their name. But there's all this cool stuff. But none of it's in the main rule book with points. None of it's in the supplement books with points. So you have no idea how much it costs to add this to your army never mind what the stats even for it are I have no idea what to consider a unit of Mastiffs, nothing uh, are they light infantry, are they light skirmishers, or uh, what are they no idea, there's no rules for them it's just here's some pretty models, have a nice day and when you just start making a game based around here's some pretty models, have a nice day, it's not going to hold my interest, it's, it's just not I just have this bad feeling about it and I'm very, very tentative on how much money I'm going to put into this. And that's just... You ask any war gamer, and they'll tell you... A game lives and dies by its tournament's play. And it's not a fun fact, it's a fact. Almost any game that makes it on the world stage has tournament rules. Magic the Gathering, X-Wing... They all have uh, Warhammer 40k... They've all got strict tournament guidelines... This game is like, uh, oh, how do I want to put it? I, w I want to say it's like an Age of Sigmar with even less rules, if you can believe that. And I played Age of Sigmar. I hated Age of Sigmar. Unbelievably hated Age of Sigmar. Now I've got this. Now again, oh, this could all change because after all... Who knows? For all I know, I'm just, you know, if I'd have turned one more page, all my answers would be right there. But if somebody happens to actually know the answers to some of the questions I've asked, please put it in the comments. Because believe me, I've looked just about everywhere. Uniformity is what I'm concerned with. What do my unit sizes need to be? Now, I know they can't be realistic because ancient Rome, or should I say, to be accurate, early Imperial Rome, their units were 10, or 10 uh, legionnaires across, 10 legionnaires deep. That's a 100-man block of 28mm scale miniatures. That was, I mean, even a, a small army would take up the entire table. So I can understand why they scaled it down. But all I'm looking for is something to base in uniformity to where... I know I'm close to historically accurate, or at least a decent representation of such. I'm thinking right now, five, uh, six men across, five men deep. Eight men across, five men deep. For the Romans and Celts, specifically. Uh, I'm not sure what to do about the ballista. According to the rule or the guidelines Rick Presley put out, a unit of light artillery is supposed to be, uh, I think it was three, but they only give you one in the box, so I don't know if the artillery is one or three models. Because again, there's no specifics. And there's a huge difference between one scorpion ballista and three scorpion ballistas. Huge difference. You can crush entire units with three scorpion ballista shots. But anyway, that's all for me for now. I will have an in-depth review at home with my proper camera as soon as I get the free time. It'll probably go up this Sunday. 
But as always, this is Nabsgold2K1, and I am signing off. Have a good night.